Mercury in cosmetics is a really serious issue that we're going to talk about in today's video. Hyperpigmentation is a skin issue that affects many people around the world, whether it be related to healing acne, an old bug bite, prior skin injury, melasma, or an autoimmune condition. And skincare products aiming to improve hyperpigmentation have been around, sold around the world for a long time. Unfortunately, there still exists a market for mercury containing skin lightening and skin bleaching creams, which are very harmful to human health. These products frequently either have mercury on its own or in combination with hydroquinone. Due to safety concerns around mercury containing hydroquinone creams, many countries around the world have banned the sale of cosmetics containing hydroquinone. Now, I want to make it clear, hydroquinone used under the supervision of your treating healthcare provider as a medication is safe. However, there are safety concerns with selling hydroquinone in a cosmetic, especially when products contain unsafe levels of mercury. And safety concerns regarding mercury containing hydroquinone creams have led to banning of cosmetic hydroquinone in many countries, such as Japan, the EU, Australia, and several African nations since 2006. In 1983, South Africa banned all but 2% hydroquinone in cosmetics. And the Ivory Coast has actually banned all skin whitening creams since 2015. In 2016, Ghana issued a ban on all products containing hydroquinone. And as you guys know from my videos, in 2020, the US CARES Act resulted in banning of over-the-counter sales of hydroquinone. To be clear, hydroquinone is safe when used under the supervision of your treating healthcare provider. There are risks and side effects, but it is overall safe. Concerns that legislators have raised about hydroquinone being carcinogenic actually come from animal studies. And we don't have any evidence or proof that that actually happens in people. We've been using it in dermatology to treat a wide array of skin conditions of hyperpigmentation for many, many years without any evidence that it causes any type of cancer. Regardless, today we are focusing on mercury, not hydroquinone. But a lot of times mercury is added to hydroquinone creams that are illegal. Despite being illegal, these mercury containing creams can still be found through a variety of online retailers. These products are disproportionately marketed to skin of color as well. For example, there was a paper published back in 2005 in which the authors went to a variety of pharmacies in the Washington Washington Heights uh, neighborhood of New York City, and they found several mercury containing skin bleaching, skin lightening creams being sold. Miss Key whitening cream contains chloride of mercury, crema santa, mercury oxide 1%, and dermaline cream, ammoniated mercury 3%. In addition to harmful amounts of mercury, these products oftentimes will contain a strong steroid cream, which I wanna make it clear, steroid creams, when used under the supervision of a treating healthcare provider, a dermatologist, for example, more than safe, but not safe to just be buying and using without supervision because they do have some serious side effects. And a lot of these skin bleaching creams not only have mercury, but they also have steroids. But long-term uninterrupted use of steroids, such as betamethasone, which is what was found in some of these uh, skin bleaching creams, can have some pretty serious side effects for the skin, thinning of the skin, stretch marks, persistent redness, acne breakouts, discoloration. And if used in areas where you have skin-on-skin -skin contact, such as under the arms, you can get a lot of absorption in the body and it actually can have some systemic negative effects such as on your endocrinologic system. It can impact your adrenal function. Yeah, it's not it's not anything to, to mess around with. Why exactly are they adding mercury to these products anyway? Mercury salts can uh, inhibit melanin production, pigment production. Unfortunately, it's not particularly effective and its side effect profile is pretty negative, not warranting its use for treating discoloration. Mercury is pretty dangerous to be putting on your skin. Mercury salts can be absorbed through the skin and end up getting passed through your kidneys and excreted in your urine. In a study of 119 women from California, New Mexico, Arizona, and Texas who were using mercury containing skin lightening creams, over 87% of them had elevated mercury levels in their body. A lot of serious harm can happen from applying these mercury containing products to the skin. It can be absorbed in the skin quite readily and it passes through the kidneys and is excreted in the urine. Applying it to the skin can lead to some pretty significant discoloration that can be quite disfiguring. It can also seriously damage your kidneys, uh, resulting in protein loss through the urine and a lot of damage to the kidneys. And it can end up 
having some pretty serious neurologic side effects. It can lead to tremor, muscle weakness. You can end up with neuropathy in the fingers and hands, excessive salivation. Have you guys ever seen Alice in Wonderland? Ever heard of the expression mad as a hatter? That comes from mercury poisoning, erythritism. You can develop a tremor, muscle weakness, drooling, excessive profuse sweating, some depression, mood changes, extreme shyness, irritability, and slurred speech. It's called Mad Hatter's Disease because in 1865 Britain, hat makers were working in really poorly ventilated rooms with heated solutions of mercuric nitrate to make felted hats. And they were getting a lot of systemic exposure and developing some of these neuropsychiatric effects of mood changes, extreme shyness, slurred speech, excessive uh, drooling, not knowing that they were actually being poisoned by the things that they were using to make the hats. These mercury containing creams can be pretty serious for young children. They can develop something called Pink's disease or acrodynia. It's called Pink's disease because the extremities, the hands and feet, the skin turns pink and becomes very painful. Initially, they didn't know why this was happening, so they called it Pink's disease because the children turned pink. But later on, they figured out it was mercury poisoning. In addition to the pink discoloration, profound sweating, excessive sweating that has an odd mousy odor is characteristic of acrodynia. These young children can develop a rash as well as serious problems with their gums and loss of their teeth. Not only is the mercury in these creams harmful to the people using it, but it's also harmful to the people around them. Mercury can be, again, absorbed through the skin and it can end up crossing the placenta in a pregnant woman and be seriously toxic to the developing baby. Mercury is also excreted in the breast milk, so harmful to breastfed babies. It can cause negative effects to people who are just around the cream, maybe inhaling some of the vapors. People using creams with mercury can end up contaminating their washcloths and towels, and then somebody else might end up using that washcloth and towel, even if it's been washed, and end up getting mercury poisoning. The FDA does not permit mercury in drugs or cosmetics, except under very specific conditions. Specifically, the FDA says that a cosmetic cosmetic must contain no more than a trace amount of mercury, and such trace amounts of mercury must be unavoidable under conditions of good manufacturing practices, and they have to be less than one part per million. The other exception is for a cosmetic intended to be used around the eye area, where it must contain no more than 65 parts per million or 0.0065% mercury. In these cases, mercury is going to be used as a preservative and only used if there is no safe or effective non-mercury substitute to preservative available. Despite legislation, skin lightening creams are still being sold online through a variety of sites, Alibaba, eBay, Amazon, Shopee, Gigi, and Flipkart. Of the 271 online products containing mercury from 17 different countries, over half of them had more than one part per million of mercury, which is beyond the threshold of what is allowable in cosmetics. And that threshold is not just here in the US, it's in most other governments as well. Based on the packaging, the majority were manufactured in Asia with 43% coming from Pakistan, 8% from Thailand, 6% from China, and 4% from Taiwan. Prior publications showed mercury concentrations in these products ranging anywhere from 93 parts per million to 16,000 parts per million. That is a lot very harmful. To a certain extent, mercury can be stored in the body as well, so cumulative exposure over time can result in more of a slow onset building to these really toxic side effects that we talked about. Recently, in December, Airy Beauty Care Night Cream from Malaysia was found to contain mercury. And then in January of this year, uh, I apologize, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, Pink Kiss Beauty Care Muda Ramaja Sepanjang Uzia herbal cream. Not only did that product have mercury, but it also had hydroquinone and tretinoin. Now to be clear, both hydroquinone and tretinoin are more than safe, but it is illegal for them to be present in a cosmetic. This isn't just a matter of theoretical risk. There are actual true cases of people who develop mercury poisoning from these products. They are harmful to human health. How do you know if your product has mercury in it? To be clear, mercury and skincare products above the thresholds that I mentioned is illegal. So the products that you buy should not contain mercury. However, there is a black market out there of mercury containing products. So right now the FDA is keeping a running list of products that they have found and identified to have mercury or hydroquinone. And this one brand, again, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, Hyati Glutathione Cream White and Bright, 15,900 parts per million of mercury. The other way to know is read the ingredient list. Um, 
reputable products, they should have an ingredient list. That's, that's required. If your product doesn't have an ingredient list, probably not reputable. Check your labels. Look for these words, mercurous chloride, calomel, mercuric, mercurio, or mercury. If you see any of these words, stop using the product. These types of products are usually marketed as skin lightening or bleaching creams, but they also may be marketed as anti-aging creams, products you know, touting benefit for improving freckles or age spots. A lot of them may be used by adolescents even for acne or to fade post-acne marks. And it has to be said that this is an issue that disproportionately affects communities skin of color. These mercury containing products are sold in shops and from online retailers that heavily market to Latino, Asian, African, and Middle Eastern communities, it disproportionately is going to impact communities' skin of color. These creams may be promoted online through different social media sites. This is the kind of thing you might get a Facebook ad for, or you might see on Alibaba, or even eBay, I've seen some of these. Sellers and distributors who market these mercury containing skin bleaching, skin lightening creams in the US can be subject to law enforcement. They can have injunctions, have the product seized, criminal prosecution. So again, I wanna emphasize, these are illegal. This is not good manufacturing to contain these. Take home points of this video, despite being illegal, skin lightening and skin bleaching creams containing high amounts of mercury are still being sold and marketed, especially to communities with skin of color. The mercury in these products can lead to serious harm, serious damage to health. These adverse consequences can affect not only the user of the cream, but anyone who comes in contact maybe with the vapors from the cream or a towel washcloth that has mercury contamination on it, or it can also be passed to the unborn baby through the placenta or through breast milk to a breastfed baby. This is a worldwide issue, but it's serious. There is some allowable trace amounts of mercury in circumstances where it is unavoidable. It should be no more than one part per million, or in the case of products used around the eye, 65 parts per million for preservatives, and again, only when there's no other preservative alternative that's going to be safe or effective. Check your label. If it says mercury or any of the other names that I mentioned earlier, red flags, the terms mercurous chloride, calomel, mercuric, mercurio, or mercury, or a product that doesn't have an ingredient list, that's sus, don't use it. And again, the FDA has a listing of the names and concentrations of mercury found in these products on their website, which I will link down below in the description box. All right, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. That's what I wanted to tell you all about mercury and cosmetics. Again, illegal, not something that you should encounter. You know, now with the internet, it is a lot easier for these types of products to slip through the cracks of legislation and what is legally allowed. And so I'm making this video as a warning. If anybody has been tempted by any type of skin bleaching or skin lightening product, it is a huge issue, especially in a lot of countries throughout Asia, for example, this is a really big problem. These skin bleaching creams with mercury can cause a lot of negative effects to people. Uh, it's a serious issue. I hope this video was informative to you all. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.